Aloha and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii in my second episode of Movement Matters. I'm Christine Linders and I'm a licensed physical therapist. I've been practicing physical therapy for over 23 years in California, New York City, Connecticut, and now in Hawaii in a variety of settings, including sports, orthopedics, neuro, and even on-site corporate wellness platforms. I'm a board-certified orthopedic clinical specialist. I'm certified in applied functional science and I have my manual therapy certification. This is my show, Movement Matters, designed to bring you the most cutting edge and effective treatment strategies so you can help your body perform better, decrease pain, and get back to doing the things that you love. Today's topic is low back pain. In the first part of the show, I will discuss why low back pain occurs and teach you about the specific group of muscles that needs to be activated in order to end the pain quickly and prevent re-injury. And in the second half, We'll be hearing all about Michael's experiences with low back pain and learn the simple way to reactivate these critical muscles so you too can heal your low back pain quickly and be back to enjoying your life. Welcome, Michael. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to have you on the show. So we're talking about low back pain, and I don't know if you know, Mike, but 80% of us at some point in our life will have low back pain. Now there's some statistics, I'll post a link for, from an article that I just had published, but that's about 540 million people in the world that will have low back pain at some point in their life. Did you know that? No. I'm not sure if the audience knows that either, but it's a big problem right now in our society. We do sit more and we're active, but I think the problem is that when we sit, it's very difficult for us to sit without rounding our spine and it's the rounding of our spine that puts a little bit extra stress on their back so i mean do you sit or are you pretty active i'm pretty active yeah what do you I like to sit. do i surf i play volleyball i hike i uh, paddleboard regularly and um i don't know play a little golf now and then not very well but that's great. It's great. It's great to stay active and it's great to be active. But what do you do when you have low back pain? So I think for the audience, when you have an episode of low back pain, it could be something that you don't realize you know you're doing. And that's what I wanted to show. So in, in image number two, some of the things I tell people are that poor posture that you don't realize you could be doing while you're sitting reading a magazine in the upper photo you see this person sitting reading the magazine and their back is only slightly rounded. But that slight rounding creates stress and increasing percentages of stress on your low back. It's the bottom underneath your shoulders, your trunk, your organs. In the picture below, you could see this person sitting with good posture, supported, reading their magazine. So those are the things I think people don't realize add up that create extra stress on their back, and then they go and they bend over to pick something up and hurt their back. In image number three, you see posture while you're washing your face, mm -hmm. brushing your teeth, shaving, anything like that. And in the picture on the left where the spine is rounded, that's how people typically do it because you would never know that there's anything wrong with that. But on the picture on the right with the flatter back, that's what you need to do to keep your low back safe while you're brushing your teeth, while you're washing your face. That's something that we do every day, twice a day, for all of our life. So that's a lot of repetitive stress that we can have on our low backs. So why do people have recurrent low back pain? So I'm gonna explain to you guys right now these two critical muscles that are responsible for keeping your low back pain, your low back free from pain. In image number one, you will see the picture on the left, which is our deepest abdominal muscle. It comes in from the sides, kind of like a corset that, that you're wrapping around yourself. That is the transversus abdominis. The image on our right is the multifidus muscles. Now these muscles are the deepest segmental spinal stabilizers. They run right up just to either side of our vertebrae, the spiny pokey bones in the back. If you bend forward, you can feel them. They're on either side and they are the primary muscle for keeping each one of your vertebrae stable while you move throughout your day. Now there's been research proven, which you'll see in the link that I'll provide, that even after one episode of low back pain, you don't regain the function of these multifidus muscles in your back without specific training. And that's what I wanna show you today, is how to retrain these muscles. So let's meet Mike. 
Picture number four. We talked a little bit about Mike. He's very active. He surfs, he paddles, he goes hiking with his grandkids. I heard this weekend that you had to go serious four by fouring on your trip. What is serious four by fouring? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a road on the west shore that goes up over a mountain and there's a campsite on the other side. Oh, that's awesome. And how uh, how much time did it take you? And was it you know bumpy road or was it climbing up and down? It was a good four wheel. It's the first time I've had to use four wheel drive in Hawaii, and it and I had to use four wheel drive. <laughs> so could I get there in my Hyundai hatchback? If a helicopter dropped you off. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so four by fouring is a great thing to do, but I have a lot of patients that also tell me that it's jostling on their back if they hit a bump in the road just because the sudden compression that has on your on your back or if you're riding a jet ski or you're in a boat on the bumpy wake of somebody else's boat that that can be tough on your back if you're having back problems so i was wondering how you did but you were okay yeah that that part was okay excellent so let's talk a little bit about your history of low back pain well you know it's hard to say I, at one point i thought uh i took a pretty good fall when i was about 28 years old doing some construction work. And I just flipped over and landed right on my butt. And uh, it hurt for a while. It was pretty, pretty painful for a while. <laughs> did you break anything? No, uh-uh. Oh, no. good. And so when did you notice you started having back pain? Well, that's probably the start okay. of when I noticed having back pain. Now, earlier, um, when I got married in 73, which was uh, about five years earlier, okay. uh, I, I look at the pictures from the wedding, and, and I'm leaning in every single picture. Ah, I see. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, chances are there's something that happened prior to that fall. Yes, that's right. So Mike and I met on Labor Day, and we talked a little bit about his back, and he was telling me what he was just telling you about having noticed being crooked in some photos. And one of the things that someone could have that notices that is a thing called scoliosis. And there's two different kinds of scoliosis that you can have. One of them being the kind that is because you are doing this all day long for 50 years. You're a dressmaker, you're a watchmaker, you're turning to do something, you're a nanny, and you're always one way and your spine muscles will overdevelop on one side. But the other kind is one that you can get either as a small child or through your adolescent growth spurt. And that's the kind that you think about with someone like Mike, who's noticed in his younger years that he was actually standing a little bit crooked. It's something that happened in his preteen to teen years where the spine takes on a curve of its own. And the reason why they call it idiopathic is because they don't really know what specifically causes it. Idiopathic meaning no known cause. So what are your symptoms like? You're very active. You surf, you play beach volleyball. I think you mentioned you played this morning before yeah, I did. we met. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I can last so long yeah. um, and, and then I have to relax. Okay. And if I don't relax and I have a bed that conforms a little bit, it has a zero gravity position, which helps a lot for sleeping at night. Until then, I didn't ever get a good night's sleep. Generally speaking, when I'm sitting at anywhere yeah. in a meeting or here even, I'm very fidgety. I have to move all the time because my back is uncomfortable if I leave it in the same place. Okay. Yeah, so that's an important thing to know is that you need to keep moving. If you do have an episode of back pain, one of the bad things that you can do is just to be still. It's important when you first hurt your back to take some rest, maybe lay down on some heat, lay down on some ice work on getting rid of the muscle spasm, which is the body's protective mechanism for letting you know something's wrong and not allowing further injury. But after that, it's very advisable to take short walks, keep moving, but remember, you gotta pay attention to how you move now. You don't wanna do something silly that you're not aware of, like bending over your sink with a rounded back or sitting, reading a magazine slouching into your sofa, you want to maintain what is called like the neutral curve of the spine, which is the path that our normal spine takes back and forth. So we met on Labor Day and we looked at your body a little bit. <laughs> and I think if we look at uh, the video number five, this is what I saw when we looked at Mike walking. And this is where Mike and his wife were mentioning how, oh yeah, I think he tends to walk a little crooked, especially if 
you've done a lot that day. Is it's that so interesting looking at this because I have no idea. I'm bent off to the side until I look at this video. And what, for the audience, what's so important there is every time he steps on his left leg, you see his shoulders drift off to the right. Now, your vertebrae are stacked on top of each other. So when that happens, there's a thing called shear, which is like a sliding back and forth that can happen. Now, if Mike was just walking down the hall a few times like that, that's not a big deal. But if Mike is walking down the hall all day long, down the beach, out to surf, paddleboarding, running around playing volleyball like that, that's where you get that wear and tear that leads you to having pain, injury, disc herniations, all kinds of problems like that. Now, I think what Mike mentioned to me is you had an x-ray <laughs> at some point. I Actu forgot when that was. <laughs> Actually, a couple times. My daughter worked for a uh, chiropractor in San Diego, and um, he took an x-ray of my back. I bought a series of adjustments, which was very helpful. Um, Great. And uh, my daughter was in talking with the doctor, and she sees this x-ray up on the monitor, and she goes, oh, my gosh, who is that? And the doctor said, that's your dad. Oh. <laughs> so... so so is that the, you had another one since then, or is that the most recent? No, I've had another one since then. I had a kidney stone. Okay. And they had to take oh. some pictures of uh, my lower back area, you know, where the, yeah. and, uh, and that showed that everything was tweaked. I had a follow-up appointment, and when I walked in, the, the doctor was astonished that I was still moving around. That's unbelievable. And I think, I think for the audience, the take-home point there is that you may have an episode of back pain and you go to your doctor and you get an x-ray or an MRI and it looks horrific like Mike's daughter saw and said, oh my gosh, who is that? How are they walking? And the doctor said, I don't know how you're moving around like that. The x-ray and the MRI, what you find, don't necessarily predict how bad you'll be because I've seen some patients who had terrible x-rays and they're walking around with a stiff back. They don't even have pain, but you're worried that they shouldn't even move because it looks so unstable. In the, in the image. So when you get your x-ray and your MRI, it's just telling you about what mechanical faults you have going on in your spine. Is there some narrowing of the canals? Is it uneven? Are some of the vertebrae sliding side to side? Is there discs bulging and pushing on the nerves? And that's just information that we as health professionals use to try to match up with some of the symptoms that you have so we know the severity. But someone like Mike who is surfing, doing exercises. He does a lot of heavy construction as a hobby, right? With <laughs> not your as own a, plates? Or not <laughs> necessarily as a hobby, but as a request from people I am i can't say no to. Yes, people like, <laughs> like me. I can't wait to have you help work on my future home someday. But Mike stays with a strong core. Mike has exercises that he does that mm -hmm. keep his really messed up x-ray healthy despite how bad it looks like and that's so important so is there there's some exercises i think you mentioned you learned from massage therapist or rolfer who we both knew from yeah, san diego uh -huh. yeah i i went to a rolfer in san diego knowing that i've had these issues for a while and he he showed me several exercises and probably if i had kept up with the things he taught me and learned more of what he had to offer i might not be as bad as i am now um, yeah, but uh, you know, I, I, I still do the exercises that he showed me uh, on a regular basis, and and then you showed me some that are that are just really good too. They fit really well with what I'm already doing, and that's great. And I think the combination is it's made in a, it has some kind of effect. I'm yeah. not sure what it is yet, but well, that's good. So. This is Movement Matters. We're going to be taking a short break. I'm here with Michael Brennan, and we'll be right back to learn a little bit more about how I've provided Michael with some exercises and exercise he's done in the past that can help you as well get rid of your low back pain fast. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life and the lives of people around you, 
Tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Becky Sampson, and I'm the host of It's About Time. On the Think Tech Hawaii, a digital nonprofit organization that's raising public awareness. Join us on Wednesday at 2 p.m. where we talk about real issues. Some of the topics will include entrepreneurship, health, life skills, and growing your business. So once again, this is Becky Sampson on It's About Time on Wednesday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. Okay, we're back, we're live. This is Movement Matters. I'm talking with Mike Brennan about his low back pain and we're gonna be learning about these secret muscles that you can activate to help get rid of your low back pain fast now. So Mike, we were just discussing some of the exercises that a massage therapist had given you. And then also I'd given you a few, I believe it's one week ago. Have you tried some of those exercises? Uh, yeah, I try to do them regularly. We were camping this weekend, oh, so yeah. I didn't, get to do all of them okay uh but yeah i've been pretty diligent about doing them regularly now do you notice i know it's been quick but do you notice any possible changes or feel anything different in doing the exercises more regularly you know i i don't know how to say this it's <laughs> it's hard to yes <laughs> but, but it's Great. hard to admit i i mean you know, I've gone through so many things that uh, with my back, and some of them have been helpful. But this, I mean, I, I'm here, and I don't feel like I need to fidget. Okay, good. Which, I, to me, that says something positive. Excellent. After I played volleyball this morning, I'm usually pretty sore. And I'm not that kind of sore right now. Okay. Yeah. So I'll take that as a positive trend, but I think it's important for us to follow up with Mike in a, in a few weeks to see if that trend has carried on with being regular with the exercises and trying a few new things, right? Mm -hmm. that's, yes. that's great. I hope that continues for you. No. <laughs> Another thing is I actively work my core uh, oh. as much as I can. I, and I believe that that's probably the only thing that keeps me going. Can we say that again? <laughs> <laughs> I actively work my core. I do. I actively work my core with different <laughs> sit-ups and stretches and all kinds of stuff to make sure that um, I've got enough muscle there to keep me playing. That is the key right there. So for all of you to activate the core, those muscles I mentioned in the beginning, the transverse abdominis and the multifidus, I didn't mention this part yet, when they contract together, you get an anatomical corset or girdle that wraps around your middle that helps to stabilize your low back. And I'm going to show you in a little bit how to activate your, those muscles in your own body in five seconds. We're going to do it here while we're sitting so that you can get control of your low back pain right away. But first, let's look at Mike. So we looked at Mike walking. Let's look at image number six, Mike standing. So I apologize for my sloppy finger on my phone. But this is what I saw when I watched Mike stand there after we watched him walk. I drew the bottom line as just a parallel to the floor, and then I angled up where his pelvis is. So what that's telling me with the, the weavy line that I drew above is that his spine is bending a little bit to the left at the bottom. So there's a little bit more compression that's happening on the left side of his spine, and a little bit more opening happening on the right side of the spine, meaning that the right side back muscles are gonna have to work harder because they're getting a stretch reflex telling them to turn on. As he walks, you saw before his shoulders shifting to the right, creating that, that shear every step he took. So that's one of the, some of the exercises I did give Mike were to help level off his pelvis and make his back muscles a little more symmetrical. What we also found in the exam, image number seven, is that on one side, Mike's hip doesn't have good rotation, and it happens to be on that left side, that left side where his spine is getting a little bit more compression. Now, you can have all kinds of symptoms from having a little bit extra compression on the spine. It could be that you have pain down your leg or some numbness and tingling, but also you can get a muscle spasm in the glute from nerve irritation that might not hurt, but might just tighten up. So 
This was one of the exercises that I gave Mike. It's one of my favorites that I give to my patients that have had disc herniations, low back pain. I have them lay on a flat surface. You can do it on your bed if you can't get to the floor. I don't want you to have more pain getting to the floor. But I call this the knee to opposite chest stretch. So your knee is lining up with your opposite chest or shoulder. And you're pulling it that way, and the lower hand is used just to gently pull your shin that way as well. You get a deep buttock stretch. A lot of people want to pull their knee way over outside of the shoulder, but then their back comes off and you're twisting your back. And I want your back to be safe while you're helping to stretch out some of the other muscles in your body. So now, Mike, I think you mentioned to me before I checked your hips that you had one when you crossed your leg that you look, I can do this, but the other side, you can't. Is that something you had noticed before we were looking at it or? A long time. Okay. You know, I've, I'm much more flexible with my right leg hip combo than I am with my left leg hip combo. Okay, yeah, and that's something that when you have a little bit of curve in your spine or you do have a scoliosis, it changes sometimes the rotation of your pelvis as well. And your hip bone, the femur, sits inside the pelvis. So when the pelvis shifts, the femur shifts, and that can change the angulation with which your deep hip rotators have to hold on to that socket. But again, we're trying to achieve symmetry because the closer we are to symmetrical, less pain that we're going to have. We don't have to be perfect. None of us are perfect. We want to get you a little bit closer so the muscles on both sides of your body can function optimally. So let's talk about neutral spine. In image number eight, neutral spine is something that we all need to be able to perform in order to engage the transverse abdominis and the multifidus, the anatomical girdle. So in this image, you can see a small space behind that person's back. So it doesn't have to be that large. Neutral spine is the position that when you lay on the floor with your knees bent up and your feet flat on the floor, it's the position that your spine is resting in comfortably. You're not pinning your back flat. You're not arching your back. It's just your most comfortable position. The, the low back has a lordosis, which is a backward curve. And so you want to have a slight backward curve, which is the normal curve when you're learning to engage your anatomical girdle. And what I will tell people in image number nine is a cue called suck it in. So what you want to imagine, pardon me, what you want to imagine is that you are pulling your belly button in towards your spine, towards your back. So you don't want to flatten your back to the floor. You want to pull your belly button in just towards your spine. And what that's doing is that's going to engage your deep back rotators so that they can form the anatomical girdle. So if we go uh, back to the camera, Mike, do you know how to engage your transverse abdominis in neutral? <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say it. <laughs> I know. So, okay, so I call it TA. Okay. Yeah, I think the, they call it TRA, TRV, TVA. It's, it's nicknamed a lot of things. I nickname it TA because transverse abdominis is a big mouthful. So if you're going to activate your TA, you're going to take your belly button and pull it in towards your spine. Your spine, you just did it right now. And that's great. And you do do that anyway because you're working your core. So when you pull that in, what activates that what we don't know about is those deepest back muscles from that first slide, they fire together and give you this anatomical girdle. And they run from one vertebrae to the next, to the next, to the next, and they go up a couple levels. So that gives you the stability to your low back. So with you doing all that excellent core work, you're activating your anatomical girdle, which is enabling you, despite your x-rays, to be able to play sports, golf, which is a lot of rotation on the spine, surfing, paddleboarding, hiking, acting like a five-year-old with your grandkids, right? <laughs> So let's go to image number 10. So image number 10 is specifically for the anatomical girdle. So what you're gonna do with that is you wanna be on a supported surface. So if you're laying on a floor or a bed, you're gonna need a sizable pillow under your stomach so that your spine will be in neutral. And if you don't have that pillow, your spine could sway into more of a lordosis, and we don't want that. So I often have people lay over their uh, countertop, their kitchen table, their bed with your leg hanging off so that you can have your spine stable. And you're going to suck your stomach in, pull your belly button into your spine, and lift one leg up. If you're going in the top photo where you're laying on the table, 
You want to lift your leg up, not so it goes beyond your back, but just enough so you feel that buttock muscle tighten. And then you put it down. You pull your belly button in, you lift the other leg up, just so you feel your glute muscle tighten, and then put it down. The reason why I don't want you to have you lift your leg higher is because then you're extending your spine and you're putting too much stress on the low back. If you go to the picture in the bottom, which is laying on your bed, laying on the floor, laying on a massage table, you want to have a pillow that enables you to keep your spine in neutral. And again, you can see from the image, the leg is just lifting an inch or two up off the table. You don't want to go higher and you don't want to have pain. That's the key. But when you do that, you are activating your multifidus muscles. And on the bottom picture as well, if you try to lift your leg and you experience any discomfort whatsoever in your low back when you do it, you need to make sure that you suck your stomach in first before you lifted it. And if you still have discomfort, all I have people do is pull your belly button in and lift your hands off of the table. So you're like in a little W position. You don't lift your head, you don't lift your chest. You just lift your hands up and you put them back down. Doing that also will activate those multifidus muscles in your back. You just need to suck your stomach in first. So I don't believe I gave you these exercises, Mike, Not but you've been doing an exercise that I was gonna show you all along, which is when you almost get in that position over the table, but you're doing it over a therapy ball, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So how long have you been doing that exercise? Quite a while. That's part of my ab workout. Yeah, so, that's great. Yeah. So I think, I think the message for everybody listening is you just have to do some core activation and you need to do it consistently. Make sure you keep your spine in neutral, which is that position that you would be over the therapy ball on the table in those images, on the, um, on the floor or your bed with a pillow under your stomach so that you can keep engaging the transverse abdominis or TA, the multifidus, so that you can be wearing your anatomical girdle as you need to be because that's the key. And the simple thing like Mike and I just did right now is if you're sitting, you suck your stomach in, you just gave yourself the anatomical girdle. So if you wanted to bend down to tie your shoes or scratch your foot, I would tell you, and I tell my patients this, though, day one when they come with back pain, pull your belly button in, suck, suck your stomach in, bend down and scratch your leg. Belly button in, reach and open the fridge door. Belly button in, get into the car. Whenever you're going to be doing something for your spine that's outside of being perfectly straight, pull your belly button in. If you are sitting there in a movie and your back hurts, suck your stomach in. Give yourself your anatomical girdle so that you can have that support to your low back. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It's actually part of martial arts. It, um, That's right. I did that for about eight years, and and part of part of what I did was pull pull. You you think about your one point, which that is two point. inches below your belly button, and that is your what helps you stabilize your core. Okay, that's fantastic. So thank you so much for coming on the show, Mike. This is Movement Matters. Thank you so much, Think Tech Hawaii, for hosting our show. Aloha, everyone.